Mike Farrell, Accurate Entertain You, with the help of David Bowie. Let's dance! Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Let's dance to the song they're playing on the radio. Let's sway. <laughs> and if you say run, I'll run with you. And if you say hide, we'll hide. Because my love for you would break my heart in two. If you should fall into my home and tremble like a flower. <laughs> so, uh, when you own 7,777 CDs, sometimes you need a little help deciding what to listen to. Uh, Professor of Rock, Adam, did a video about uh, David Bowie. He wrote the song, which I never, I didn't know growing up that he wrote the song, uh, Heroes. We could be heroes just for one day. I thought that was uh, I thought that was a, a wallflower song when I was a kid growing up in the nineties. But uh, no, apparently David Bowie wrote it. But uh, so I dug out the seven or eight uh, CDs I have from David Bowie after watching that video from Professor Rock, including uh, Tonight from eighty four, I believe, and Let's Dance from eighty three. Which, uh, years ago, everybody, like 20 years ago, everybody was given their cassette tapes and even CDs of the Salvation Army and Goodwill. And I was buying them up and turning them into CDs, <laughs> homemade CDs, and using the tape, the artwork from the cassette tapes to uh, line the uh, case of the homemade CD. <laughs> but... Uh, <clears throat> So I was able to acquire all this historical, musical, the music, uh, historical, you know, stuff from the music business <laughs> for next to nothing. For example, uh, somehow it makes sense, uh, 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 maybe because he's deceased now, but somehow it makes sense that David Bowie made a song called Loving the Alien. <laughs> I didn't know much about him uh, growing up uh, other than... He had a, a an, or, an orthodox uh, persona. <laughs> Beyond that, I thought him and Boy George were an item when I was a little little kid. <laughs> I thought they were. A <laughs> but I do recollect my sister showed me a video. Uh, I guess he knew his time was coming, and he did a video where he's in a coffin and everything. And a coworker told me that that whole album, which I don't have, um, is the songs are all. About death. and <laughs> But in many ways, a lot of this stuff is still new to me. Now, apparently, he made a song called Cat People Putting Out Fire. <laughs> and when I saw this title, I thought, was this an issue in England? <laughs> People who love cats, but also happen to love having lit candles all over their house? <laughs> I think... Uh, um, I can see where that would be, such a scenario would result in a, <laughs> a catastrophe. An occasional, as my deceased grandfather would say, housewarming. And on an 87 album called Never Let Me Down, there's a song in there called Glass Spider. And... He also has a song, uh, uh, Ziggy Stardust, I, I learned is the title of it, but, where he references spiders from Mars. And I'm thinking, did David Bowie go to Mars <laughs> and encounter some glass spiders and not tell anyone? <laughs> Maybe he did, there's just no uh, concrete record of it. Now, in my collection, of course, I do have Changes Bowie, which is basically the closest thing to, like, a hits compilation from all his, uh, his, uh, life's catalog. <clears throat> but, uh, somebody made me a disc, uh, The Best of Bowie Part 1. Um, 
And I didn't know the names of the songs, so I just kind of like made up my own names. I didn't know uh, Ground Control to Major Tom. Obviously, when I compiled this homemade disc, I didn't know that song was called Space Odyssey. <laughs> or Oddity. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> there's another track on here. I still don't know the name of it, but he says in the song, Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Lennon's on sale again. The Bush song, the, my favorite rock band, Bush, Everything Zen, he says, Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow, Dave's on sale again. I always assumed it was reference to his bass player, who happened to be named Dave. <laughs> I guess everything becomes a parody in time, but now, that, but now that when I think about this, Gavin Rossdale has labeled Bowie as a subtle influence on him, <laughs> musically speaking. <laughs> But I guess everything eventually becomes a parody. It's just a testament to the limitations of humanity. <laughs> On the other hand, Gavin Rossdale is from England too, so <laughs> it would make sense that you know um, a guy like Bowie might be a a kind of sort of hero <laughs> or whatever. Another song I don't I'm not sure of the title of it, but I called it "All the Young Dudes Carry the News." It reminded me of the movie, the Disney movie, Newsies, back when Disney actually made Family Entertainment. <laughs> uh, and, and Margaret's in that movie, but uh, that was a good movie <laughs> about the uh, paper boys that were the system was taking advantage of them. And I believe uh, Teddy Roosevelt is in the movie, or I mean, not the actual guy, but <laughs> there's reference to Teddy Roosevelt in it. The only other note I want to make about this is when I was uh, making up the titles as they go along because I didn't know what the songs were called, I learned later the song was called Panic in Detroit. I thought he was saying panic can be a choice. <laughs> but uh, that's an interesting track. <laughs> I also uh, <coughs> listened to the soundtrack to uh, Labyrinth. Um, the movie Labyrinth. Um, when I saw that movie when I was a kid, to me, that movie was never-ending stories for girls. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I thought about it that's when I was a kid. It's, it's a, I, first of all, I was I was nine. I really couldn't say the word uh, Labyrinth. Um, um, but... Uh, so I just say, oh, you're talking about that movie, it's never-ending stories for girls. <laughs> that movie just seems very chaotic. I remember it just, it just seemed very chaotic. And definitely more for a feminine mindset. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to, I guess I'm going to have to uh, give, it a, give it another watch. <laughs> um, I have a copy of it, I... Even though I didn't understand it, it's still a pretty good soundtrack, and I've always been a sucker for uh, um, gospel music. <laughs> Normally, I would keep uh, that with like the soundtracks okay, in, in the soundtrack category of my seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven CD collection, but with this pff, labyrinth featuring David Bowie, I made an exception. I <laughs> keep this with the David Bowie stuff. I'll have to watch the movie again. Maybe I'll do a video after I do about my perspective now. But it just seemed... I just recall the movie being very chaotic and the justice in the story being... Uh, uh, momentary and fleeting. <laughs> Feminine mindset. <laughs> it's just never-ending stories for girls. I know we live in a world that uh, wants us all to think that uh, little boys' brains and little girls' brains are, ba are the same, but they're not. <laughs> they, uh, they're different. They perceive the world differently. I will say, uh, Jennifer Connelly was in the movie, and uh, she was always, she was definitely eye candy for 
really the generation before me, but even though she was older than me, I, I won't deny I took notice. <laughs> now, woman doesn't age. Until the last movie I saw her in was uh, Elita, Battle Angel. She was in that movie. And then finally, finally, I started seeing a little bit of age in her face. But you can't really tell from those movies. They polish these performers up so good. <laughs> Matter of fact, if I think back long, longer, even longer back in my memory... I think the first film I ever remember her, her being was a movie called Creeper, which was another uh, movie that was actually for the generation before me. <laughs> I saw it on TV <laughs> years later. And the last CD I have that is related to David Bowie, I might be the only one in the world with it, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I like that idea that I have music in my collection that nobody else has. Apparently, Bowie, with three other guys, uh, formed a band called Tin Machine in 1989. Um, pretty good, actually. I, I enjoyed the whole damn CD. <laughs> um, um, I started hearing a little bit of influence in the band Bush <laughs> in some of these, specifically the tracks Pretty Thing and Video Crime. Um, but... Uh, um, um, Bowie formed this band with uh, three other guys, Reeves, Gabriel, and Hunt Sale, and Tony Sales. But, uh, yeah, maybe I'm the only one in the world with this one. But, <laughs> but uh, anyways, I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> um, uh, specifically, uh, I really like the track Video Crime. Ain't got room for Hollywood. Chop it up. <laughs> Me, I'm crawling with no cash. Chop it up. Blood on video, video crime. A lot of sound effects in it. Video crime. Needles and pins and video crime. Video crime. I've got dollars. I've got cents. Wonder where the third world went. It's right here. America's becoming the third world <laughs> under this freaking administration. <laughs> Bone, bonehead administration. America last. The flunk America administration. There is a cover uh, by this tin machine man of working class hero John Lennon. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> but I enjoyed the whole damn CD. <laughs> Uh, the only other notations is uh, by uh, talking to other people at work. I uh, uh, checked out some stuff online about him. Apparently he made a song even before, uh, sometime in the 70s, I guess, called uh, The Dancing Gnome, or, or no, the, the, the Laughing Gnome. <laughs> so I gave it a listen. It's basically David Bowie and Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> That's my impression anyways. And then somebody else also mentioned a movie he was in called uh, The Man Who Fell From Earth, which I, I looked up some stuff. I checked out the trailer for it. I made the mistake, uh, maybe made the mistake of uh, checking out the comments section because somebody spoiled the end with a comment they made. But I thank the person. Well, you saved me two hours. On, <laughs> I don't have to watch it now. <laughs> Basically, all movies are the same anyways. Um, the, the morals of them and everything. It's just uh, basically same morals, just in a different format. I mean, when you watch as much movies as I've had most of my life, you know, a lot of movies are identical morals. The the end of the movies result in identical moral morale, but um, just like in a slightly different format. And the only other personal memory that I can recollect involving David Bowie um is uh, uh a song called Afraid of a I'm Afraid of America I'm Afraid of the World it's supposed to be I recall seeing a video of it and it's supposed to be David Bowie and Trent Reznor of uh, Nine Inch Nails I'll have to google that and watch that video because I haven't seen it in years <laughs> all I remember is Trent Reznor is chasing David Bowie. <laughs> That's all I remember about the video. 
So anyways, that's all my David Bowie CDs so far in my 7,777 CD collection. Unfortunately, most of them are homemade and recorded from cassette tapes. And I already stated in my past video when I started doing this that I was not going to count those ones I homemade. I was only going to count ones I had that were manufa professionally manufactured. So unfortunately, that only brings the tally to two. <laughs> um... Because uh, I do have an original manufacturer copy of Changes Bowie and, of course, Tin Machine. Which, like I said, I might be the only, might, might be the only one in the world with this CD. <laughs> but I'm cool with that. Like I said, I'll probably uh, check out, uh, I'll probably re-give uh, Labyrinth uh, an, uh, another watch and maybe I'll make a video. and Maybe my opinion will change, but... I don't think it'll change that much. Yeah. Uh, Never-ending stories for girls. <laughs> and my opinion of uh, like that has nothing to do with the fact that there is puppetry in it. That that has nothing to do with it. It's uh, the chaotic nature of the film, and it just seems like the 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 morale and the justice is is momentary and fleeting. <laughs> Feminine mindset. <laughs> the way the female brain works. <laughs> I'm just calling it like I see it. All right. Uh, Mike Perlack, thank you for your time.